So I was born in Buckinghamshire. This is the area that I was born. And the new city of Milton Keynes was built on the, my doorstep. And um, it was just amazing. And this is why I became an architect because of this city and because of the planning. I used to work in the building on the left, that's Lloyd's Court when it was finished, uh, from when I was about 14 at school holidays. And it was an inc it's incredible that this city was planned and got built. And it was planned on a flexible one kilometer grid, which took into account all the features in the landscape. But you can see from the artist's impression to the actual fit finish thing, five million trees were planted um, during the construction. So you can imagine my, not surprised because I did know, but when I went to Talliers in East, I saw the Broadacre city model. This is the plan that Milton Keynes was built on. And it was Frank Lloyd Wright's vision for a flexible grid that was spread across the landscape. And I couldn't believe the similarities in the images. And that's why I became an architect. So I also got fascinated by his work, not by his bigger projects, by his smallest projects. And these were the Usonian homes built from 1934 onwards to about 1950. 60 of them were built. And this is what I did my dissertation on at the Royal College of Art. And this is a Herbert Jacobs house built in 1937. Extremely modest. It was the American dream, uh, own a house and a car. And in fact, Frank Lloyd Wright invented the car port. So instead of a garage, you put, just put your car under a roof. But really beautiful lines. And I, I visited 20 of these homes and stayed in most of them, which was incredible. Um, the Usonian homes were L-shaped, so they were very pa passive. They faced south, and so they gained as much energy as they could from the sun. The, the, the owners were fantastic. Remember, this was 30, nearly 40 years ago when I visited these homes. There was no internet. Everything had to be done by um, le le letters. Um, I don't think faxes were even going then. Um, so this is the Van Brown house. Um, Mr. Van Brown still lived there when I, when I visited. He was a dentist. And many of these houses were made from co concrete blocks. And Frank Lloyd Wright would send out the plans. He would visit the site, draw it, send the plans. And these were self-made homes. And the dentist made, made the molds from his amalgam, from the, the, the stuff that you make your, the molds from your teeth from. And these are the actual blocks that he had a few spare. Um, and there's my first Swatch watch 40 years ago, <laughs> giving it a bit of scale. But it was really fascinating that these were sort of these hand-built kit, kit homes. As I say, Wright planned um, six, 60 of these. And I was, it was really amazing to travel around America and see nearly 20 of these. As I say, they're extremely modest, but very modern. And the furniture here is incredible. Um, and this house has been lived in, um, but, but the owners lived in it from the moment they built it. Um, I'm not sure if they're st still alive, but Frank Lloyd Wright visited them twice, uh, once planned and once by surprise. So <laughs> he was very interested in how his uh, pro pro properties and his buildings uh, were used. Um, as I mentioned, they were made from blocks, and these blocks could be, in, um, be given di 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 different patterns. Um, and what's been interesting putting this uh, together, because we're architects now, we have our own practice in Japan, but did this influence what we get up to? So this is Daikan Yamati site. It's a bookstore in t Tokyo. Um, and there, there are those blocks uh, which have sort of crept in, in, into our work. Um, so this is one of the most famous bookstores in Tokyo now. Um, it was built um, nine, nine years ago and has won many, many awards. And just to put our work in context, this is Ginza Place. Um, it's um, on the main crossroads, uh, the epicenter of t Tokyo in Ginza. Um, and it's a global showroom for uh, Nissan cars and it's a mi mixed use above. But, you know, from Frank Lloyd Wright and M M Milton Keynes and making me an architect, it's kind of coming f full circle. Um, we also run a gallery in t Tokyo called S Super Deluxe. And at the dawn of d digital photography and keynote on the Mac, um, we started running these show and tell uh, e evenings. Um, architects get up to lots of interesting things, but they don't have a platform to show and share their work. So we came up with this idea of showing 20 images for 20 seconds each, because you know what, architects talk too much. And uh, Pachacha Night was born. Uh, Pachacha is the sound, it's the name of the sound of chit chat in Japanese. Pachacha, 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 it's an onomatopoeia. And from a one-off event, this, uh, this started to spread around the world. 
One of the key things is that we're a very a bottom up presentation format and we're trying to find the hidden heroes in cities, people that never normally have a, a stage. So this, uh, so, so, so this guy uh, builds scaffolding around some of the tallest buildings in Japan. He's 63, he'd never sp spoken uh, before. This is the first time he'd taken to the stage. And from this one-off event in Tokyo, um, over, over 17 years, we've now spread to 1,233 cities around the world. And it is really uh, amazing. We don't promote the format. We don't charge for the format. And I think that's one of the reasons um, it's spread. The only person I've asked is Peter Exley in Chicago. But why, why has it become so popular, so successful? Well, I think it's a simple framework, 20 slides, 20 seconds. It's fast, it's fun, and it's friendly. And it gives you a very simple framework to hang your story on with a start, a middle and an end. And that's why it's being sort of really loved in schools. But I'll talk about that a little bit later. The other great thing is it's just not a format. It's a community too, yeah. And that, that, that's like, it's like the circular economy. The format promotes a community. The community promotes a format. And that's why I think this has been so uh, successful and has had the longevity that it has. We grow by 10 cities a month every month, which is really, really incredible. And as I mentioned, that schools and universities and offices have adop adopted this, and we've just released um, a, a new product on the website where anybody can upload, voice, and share presentations online. And most of these pres presentations tonight have been compiled using Pachacha Create, and I hope you can go across to the website and check, check it out too. It's really great for schools, really great for teaching kids how to present. And as Martha said at the beginning, all of our presentations around the world suddenly stopped during the pan pandemic. But on April the 9th, we had our first online event. We called it Inspire. We want to inspire the world with all this possible positivity. We've held 20 events already, 30 more in, in the calendar. And we hope this gets us through uh, the, the, the difficult moment we're all in right now before we can all get to get back together live again at Pachacha Nights around the world. Thank you so much.